name is Julie. My name is Alain. And we say no to bullying because my son took his life seven years ago. My son Dean was a very um, lively child. He, had, he was a child full of energy. He loved life. He had a lot of friends. Um, he, he was funny. He had a huge sense of humor. He liked to make people laugh. He was extremely generous. He had a huge heart. He was the kind of kid that you could easily get attached to. Up until he was eight years old, uh, we lived in Ottawa, where Dean went to an English school there. And everything went fine. He had awesome grades. And when he was eight years old, we decided, I decided to move to Gatineau um, with him. And at that point, he, he, had, he was transferred to a French school. I was happy about that for the fact that um, he would have to learn to speak French properly. And for me, it was really important that he learns to be bilingual because um, I wanted him to have as much opportunity later on as possible. Unfortunately, um, his first year uh, of school in Gatineau, he, he ended up getting a teacher that had prejudice against English people and chose not to help him uh, with his work or just to help him integrate himself into school. Um, and because of that prejudice, the, the, the students picked up on this and started to, uh, to tease him and bully him. Uh, they would call him square heads and poke him and throw erasers at him and push him in the schoolyard and just basically put him down all the time. I went many times to the school to, um, to talk to the, the principal. I told the principal that I had a feeling the teacher had prejudice towards Dean and of course the principal said it's not possible, uh, the, the teacher wouldn't do that and the teacher would deny it. So, And this went on until January approximately where I was able to, we caught the teacher in a scenario and we were able to prove to the principal that the teacher had prejudice against my son and, and Dean ended up getting a, a new teacher. That new teacher went was a lot nicer and things went well, but by then Dean had already withdraw pretty much and had, was dealing with a lot of frustration and anger um, based on everything he had been put through up until now. The school social worker saw him, I think one time or two times maybe, and suggested that Dean should be put on medication, which I objected because Dean did not have any uh, issues as far as I was concerned mentally because everything was going fine in that other school and and this only began following the bullying and the prejudice he had experienced from the teacher and the students. The school threatened me that if I did not put him on medication that they would report me for failing to follow uh, professional recommendations. So my hands were tied, I put Dean on medication. It solved the school problem for his concentration. He was able to concentrate in class and he was able to do his work like they wanted, but it did not solve the bullying problem. He was still getting bullied and poked and pushed and put down and being, still being called a squarehead. But that didn't seem to concern. The school turned a blind eye to that completely. As a parent, I did everything that I could, but I felt helpless because I didn't know what else to do. I had no help. The school would not help. And you, you feel helpless because you see your son suffering and there's nothing you can do about it. In August of 2006, it was August 22nd specifically, uh, Dean was one week from school starting over again. He was losing his best friend because his best friend was moving away. He knew he was going back to that school alone. And on that day specifically, he bumped into kids that ended up bullying him and threatening him to make his life difficult when the new school year was coming, was starting over. He decided that he didn't want to face that anymore and he took his own life. Um, that day, um, my world fell apart. Dean was my foundation. I had him young and and he was my foundation, my motivation for um, finishing school, getting a good job, in order to build a good future for him and give him all the opportunity that uh, to make all the opportunities available to him. When Dean decided to take his own life, that had a tr tremendous impact in our own life. Not too far after, we developed what is called a post-traumatic stress disorder. 
Um, in my case, it lasted about six to nine months. And in, her, in Julie's case, I think she still has sequels from that. Um, what that is, is that, long story short, it creates some kind of uh, going back in time to uh, the safest place you could think of, which in in real life it's uh, your mother's womb. So basically you take some, some things that from the past. So in other words, in our case, we began to feel afraid of the dark, which is not really normal for our, our, an adult. We start being very um, hyper, uh, hyper nervous, anxiety, um, some somewhat claustrophobic, you know, if you, if you go uh, to do your grocery and all of a sudden you have the urge that you need to get out of there because you can't stand people being around you and stuff like that. Since then, there's also part of us that always feels a bit disconnected uh, with society today. Um, it's hard, we cannot explain it because if you, if you don't go through it, you cannot understand it, but it basically it has a, an effect on our, our uh, the way we, we interact with others, basically. And that's why, to bullying, we say no.